the horrific story of Monty Rissell, the rapist and serial killer with a genius IQ who had killed five people by his teens. Monty Rissell's first murder came after the prostitute he was raping tried to make it enjoyable, and he was so angry that he chased her to her death down a ravine and bashed her skull in with a rock. Then, to make doubly sure she was dead, he held her head under water until she had drowned. Monty was just 18 when he killed his first victim in 1976, an act that was triggered by the sight of his ex-girlfriend with her new boyfriend. He drove home to his apartment block, which would become the epicenter of five separate acts of heinous violence over the next few months, and sat in his car getting high and drunk, and growing increasingly angry. He stole a car at gunpoint unaware that Aura Gaber was a sex worker. When she tried to defuse the situation by asking him what position he wanted to have sex in, he saw red, and investigators claim that this is why she ended up dead. Monty told them she asked which way I wanted it. It's like this BH is trying to control things. She took off running down the ravine. That's when I grabbed her in an arm lock. She was bigger than me. I started choking her, she stumbled, we rolled down the hill and into the water. I banged her head against the side of a rock and held her head under water. Monty also claimed that Aura faked several orgasms during the assault, further cementing his belief that women are W.S. He would go on to rape and kill another four in Alexandria, Virginia, a series of sick events triggered by a hatred for women rooted in a bad relationship with his mum. FBI Mind inter John Douglas claims in his book that he checked Rissell's IQ and found it to be 120 and added that he didn't see a lot of remorse when speaking to him in one of his behind bars interviews. He also told investigators that he would have become a lawyer if he had been allowed to stay with his dad rather than his mum, who he despised. Monty told police that the second victim, who he stabbed to death after raping, talked too much and made him see red. He said, she wanted to know why I wanted to do this, why I picked her, didn't I have a girlfriend, what was my problem, what was I going to do? Monty didn't kill his third victim, she was allowed to live as she told him she was caring for her cancer-stricken granddad. Numbers 4 and 5 didn't survive, with the former being drowned and the latter stabbed more than 100 times. He was later charged with killing and raping another victim, bringing his tally up to five. Monty was eventually caught after a huge police operation and slapped with five life sentences in 1978. The Washington Post reported that same year that Monty was penning a tell-all book about his crimes and described the night he killed his unknown victim as if it was an into to a romance novel. They say he penned, it was in the late evening of August 14. It was cool and breezy out, about 9 o'clock at night, which is the opposite of what the court heard about the 2.am slaying. Ten years before he attempted to publish his memoirs, they never made it past the draft stage due to new U.S. laws stopping criminals profiting from their crimes. Monty was a troubled child. His parents split when he was seven, and he never saw his dad again, despite it pleading to live with him full time. Monty was small for his age and was just nine when he first exhibited antisocial behavior, writing obscene graffiti on his school's walls and shooting his cousin with an air rifle. The latter earned him a beating from his strict ex-military stepfather, who hit him so hard with the gun that it broke against his tiny body. Aged 12 his mum and stepdad split and Monty's crime started to escalate, with him committing his first burglary. The following year he was arrested for driving without a license, and when he was 14 he was arrested for stealing a car and the rape and robbery of his neighbor, who he attacked at knife point, while wearing a mask. He was sent to a reform school, where they diagnosed a multiple personality disorder and adjustment reaction of adolescence. Monty continued to be in and out of institutions until he was imprisoned, with his doctors unaware that he was sneaking out to rape and kill. However, just like Edmund Kemper, John Douglas pointed out he was able to convince a psychiatrist he was making excellent progress while he was actually killing human beings. Read more about Edmund Kemper, the 6'9 serial killer who raped his own mum's decapitated head. 
and serial killers don't just happen in the U.S. Joanna Dennehy has been bragging about killing an extra victim.